was like the cue. You knew I was coming. Good afternoon. Later today at 1.35 p.m. Hawaii time, Vice President Mike Pence, at the request of President Trump, will participate in an honorable carry ceremony at Joint Base Pearl Harbor. The leader of North Korea has followed through on his commitment to return the first set of remains of Americans to our homeland. These brave souls deserve nothing but our honor and respect. The families of these soldiers have been waiting for more than 60 years for their loved ones to come home. We hope that as remains are identified, families like those of Commander John C. McKeel can find peace. John was assigned to Navy Squadron 125 and was killed while leading a dive bombing mission into North Korea. John's nephew, Doug, who lives in Minnesota, recently wrote the president a letter explaining how his uncle was a special person who grew up in the Great Depression and wanted to serve his country. Another letter from Mary in Pennsylvania tells the president of her uncle, Corporal Andrew Boyer, who has been missing in action in Korea since September of 1951. Mary has a picture of her uncle hanging in her living room as a reminder of his commitment and service to our country. Both of these men and their families represent thousands of proud, patriotic American families. The president is committed to them and will work to bring them the closure they deserve. On another matter, we have seen all of the alarming images of the wildfires causing severe damage out west. The White House and FEMA have been actively monitoring the wildfires to ensure that federal assistance is provided as quickly as possible. On Saturday, the president declared that an emergency exists for the California wildfires. As a result, FEMA has placed resources from eight different federal departments and agencies to support the efforts of local firefighters and relief organizations. The president will continue to monitor this ongoing emergency and make sure the people of California receive the assistance they need to keep them safe and recover. Our prayers are with the firefighters who recently lost their lives battling these fires and their grieving families. Lastly, the president has been closely following the ongoing situation in Turkey involving Pastor Andrew Brunson. We've seen no evidence that Pastor Brunson has done anything wrong, and we believe he is a victim of unfair and unjust detention by the government of Turkey. At the president's direction, the Department of Treasury is sanctioning Turkey's Minister of Justice and Minister of Interior, both of whom played leading roles in the arrest and detention of Pastor Brunson. As a result, any property or interest in property of both ministers within U.S. jurisdiction is blocked and U.S. persons are generally prohibited from engaging in transactions with them. For anything further, I would refer you to the Treasury Department on that front. And with that, I will take your questions. Zeke. Uh, thank you, sir. First, uh, just a quick note uh, on behalf of the press corps. Last month, there were only three briefings with you, totally under an hour. Um, if, if at some point in the next month or two, obviously, there's travel concerns, but if you can, we'd, we'd appreciate if you were if you'd be able to give us some more time. There are a lot of issues we'd like to cover. Uh, one of those, uh, first off, is the president's tweet this morning uh, about uh, the Russian government's direction to the trade Senate sessions, asking him to uh, end the Mueller probe right now. Um, the president said a few weeks ago that he did, or a few months ago, sorry, that he was not going to intervene in the Department of Justice's handling of that investigation. Does that tweet this morning mark a change in posture by the president? Uh, it's not an order. It's the president's opinion. And it's ridiculous that all of the corruption and dishonesty that's gone on with the launching of uh, the witch hunt, the president wants to has watched this process play out, but he also wants to see it come to an end, as he stated many times. Uh, and we look forward to that happening. And, uh, on a different topic, Sarah, you mentioned that uh, the transfer of, the, of these remains to Mark uh, North Korea, uh, the North Korean leader, fulfilling his commitment uh, to the president as a treaty in Singapore. There's a report yesterday that North Korea is uh, still uh, assembling uh, ICBMs, and as well as having on says that uh, it's, it's not yet possible to verify that the remains that have been transferred back are, in fact, human or American. How does that uh, meet sort of the test of you know, North Korea fulfilling its uh, commitment that it agreed to in Singapore? Uh, I'm not going to comment on the first part of your question on any potential intelligence matter. Uh, in terms of the remains, we have uh, the best of the best that have been working uh, over the last several weeks on this process. We'll keep you updated on it, uh, but we feel comfortable in the assessment that they've made up until this point. John. Sarah, on the uh, next proposed tranche of tariffs against uh, China, uh, the figure initially uh, for tariffs was 10%. But it's our understanding that the president now wants to take that up to 25 percent. What's the reason behind increasing it from 10 to 25? And, and in a tit for tat, if you want to call a trade war or something else, 
Who has more bullets, China or the United States? Uh, the president firmly believes that uh, the United States certainly does. Uh, we'll have an update later today, and there will be a call at 3.30 this afternoon to walk through the details of that update uh, in regards to the question you asked about 10 to 25. Look, the, the bottom line is the president's going to continue to hold China responsible for their unfair trade practices. Uh, this has gone on for long enough, and he's going to do something about it. Does, does, the president, Sarah, does the president Sarah, believe that? Sarah, Sarah, go ahead, I was just going to say, the president has made some headway with the EU in terms of lowering trade barriers, taking steps toward leveling the playing field. Does the president and his team believe that that is possible with China without some taking some real punitive measures? Certainly, we'd like to uh, see the le the playing field level. Uh, the president as both he and I think about 15 members of his administration have said repeatedly we'd like to see the unfair trade practices stop. But until that happens, the president's going to hold their feet to the fire. He's going to continue to put pressure on China. Uh, and he's not going to sit back and allow American uh, industries and American workers to be taken advantage of. Dave. Sarah, uh, churches around the country, synagogues, some evangelical leaders have been up in arms in the last few weeks about last year's tax cut law. They say there's a provision in there that's going to force them to pay a new 21 percent uh, federal income tax on the benefits that they give to certain employees. Can, can you assure churches um, from the podium there that they're not going to have to pay a new tax? Uh, I'm not going to make a blanket generalization about every church in America, but certainly the goal uh, of the tax cuts and reforms package was to provide the greatest amount of relief to the greatest number of Americans, and we feel that it's done that. Uh, and We feel that the other policies that the president has put forward when it comes to the economy have certainly moved the ball forward, made our economy infinitely stronger than it has been in decades, and I think you can see that by all of the numbers that have come out over the last year and a half. Sarah, Sarah, Hunter? These are tax Thank you, sir. traditionally tax exempt What is the president prepared to do to make sure they keep their tax exempt status? Certainly something that we're looking into, but I don't have anything specific for you on that front. Hunter. Thank you, Sarah. Um, federal law says that, quote, any threatening letter or communication aimed at impeding a criminal investigation constitutes obstruction of justice. Uh, Rudy Giuliani issued a statement saying he doesn't think this morning's tweet is obstruction because the president said Sessions should stop the Mueller probe rather than ordering him to halt it. You just echoed that reasoning before. Um, what I want to know is, is Rudy Giuliani the one giving the president legal advice on his tweets? And does that statement reflect the opinion of the president's legal team? Uh, look, the president is not obstructing. He's fighting back. The president is stating his opinion. He's stating it clearly. Uh, and he's certainly expressing the frustration that he has uh, with the level of corruption that we've seen from people like Jim Comey, Peter Strzok, Andrew McCabe. Uh, there's a reason that the president's angry. And frankly, most of America is angry as well, and there's no reason he shouldn't be able to voice that opinion. Sarah, Margaret, <laughs> sorry, we're going to keep going. Margaret, go ahead. I'm sorry, did you, were you just... Okay. Um, Tesla plans to spend $5 billion to build a plant in China. Uh, it's, they're saying it's not going to affect Tesla operations in the U.S., but I'm wondering whether the administration has any concerns about Tesla's plans. Certainly, we'd love to see all American companies uh, investing here. Uh, I don't have anything specific on Tesla, but we would encourage all companies to build their plants in America, put their investments here, and certainly not engage and help bolster uh, a country like China that has continued to be part of um, a very unfair process and very unfair trading practices. John? Sarah, thanks a lot, Sarah. There was a reaction to the president's uh, tweets today from some of his allies on Capitol Hill. Uh, Republican Senator Hatch said, I don't fully get what he's trying to do. And another Republican Senator, Senator Thun, said the Mueller investigation needs to move forward. He said they ought to let them complete their work. Do you agree with that sentiment expressed by Senator Thun that this investigation by uh, Mr. Mueller ought to be completed and not be sort of cut off at its right. We certainly think it should be completed. We'd like it to be completed sooner rather than later. It's gone on uh, for an extensive amount of time. They've still come up with nothing in regards to the president. We'd like to see it come to a, a close. Uh, we've said that a number of times. So, sure, we actually agree on that front. Sarah, Cecilia? If I may, Sorry, Sarah, I'm just because just we're tight on time because the president's going to be speaking. The, Cecilia, the go ahead. Sorry, John, just because we're tight on time, I'll try to 
get to as many people as possible. Cecilia, go ahead. Does the president still believe that millions of people are voting illegally in this country? Is that the basis for this push for uh, requiring voter IDs? Even if there are 10 people that are voting illegally, it shouldn't happen. The president wants to see the integrity of our election systems upheld, uh, and that's the purpose of his comments. He wants to make sure that anybody that's voting is somebody that should be voting. And I think that's something that, frankly, should be celebrated, uh, not discriminated. When was the last Major? Time the president went to a grocery store? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why that matters either. Well, well, Major, go ahead. Last night, you go to the grocery store. You go to the grocery store. I go to the grocery store. I've never had to show I've an ID to buy lately, my grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> Major, I've never had to show an ID to buy my grocery store. I've never had to show an ID to buy my grocery store. I've never had to show an ID when I go to buy groceries. Uh, certainly, if you if you go to a grocery store and you buy beer and wine, you're certainly going to show your ID. Is I don't think that. Who doesn't drink meth? Uh, he's not saying every time he went in. He said, when you go to the grocery store, uh, I'm pretty sure that everybody in here who's been to a grocery store that's purchased beer or wine has probably had to show their ID. If they didn't, uh, then that's probably a problem with the grocery store. Sarah, Major, go ahead. Sarah, to follow up on John Decker's question, uh, you want the investigation to end. You want it to end, I presume, also without any obstruction, meaning without any interference. Many have described the president's tweet this morning as blowing off steam. Is that a fair characterization? It's just an opinion he's throwing out there. It has nothing to do with his actual governmental control of or supervision of this investigation. Once again, as I said earlier, the president stating his opinion. Um, it's not in order, but he's been, I think, uh, crystal clear about how he feels about this investigation from the beginning. Can you Sarah. Because you, you said a moment ago that the investigation itself is corrupt. The Mueller investigation. Then you mentioned Comey and McCabe and Strzok. They're not Strzok certainly isn't anymore. He was for a time. The entire investigation is based off of a dirty, discredited dossier that was uh, paid for by an opposing campaign uh, and had a lot of corruption within the the entity which was overseeing it, which was Peter Strzok, James Comey, Andrew McCabe. We've laid this out a number of times. Uh, I don't think that we have to go into it every so single time we're in here. If it is corrupt, why doesn't the president just end it or use the powers he has Once to Once again, end the president's it? allowed this. Why doesn't he follow through on it? Once again, the president has allowed this process to play out, uh, but he thinks it's time for it to come to an end. Sarah, go ahead. Thank you, Sarah. Um, can you, I'm just wondering if you can clarify with this tweet from this morning. Is it the president's desire for first sessions to unrecuse himself from the probe? And is it also his desire for the special counsel to be fired? I think I've clarified this about 10 times Sarah, now. Sarah. It's the president's opinion. I don't have anything further. Sarah, Steve. Sarah. Yes, Sarah. Last night at the Tampa rally, the president again pushed for creation of a space force as a new military branch. The Defense Department today missed a deadline uh, to submit a report to Congress uh, about how this uh, <coughs> space force is to be structured. And we're told that the White House has now twice rejected drafts uh, because the Defense Department doesn't want a space force. It'd rather create a space command under the existing military structure. In view of this, how is the president going to force the creation of a space force? Uh, we're continuing to work with the Department of Defense to figure out and determine the best way forward, something the president feels strongly about. Uh, and we're going to work with our team there and figure out the best solution. Sarah, Yamish? Sarah, I, have I have a question about the president um, is meeting with inner city pastors. Today, Secretary Carson has pushed policies that would raise the rent on many poor people. He's also pushed policies that would slow anti-immigration initiatives. What is the president going to say to these inner city pastors whose areas might be hurt by some of these policies? Certainly that's the reason to sit down with these individuals, to hear their feedback, hear their concerns. Uh, I know the primary point of discussion for today is to discuss prison reform, but I wouldn't be surprised if they raise those issues, and that's why the president's invited them here so that he can have those ongoing uh, conversations and determine how best to help them in a number of different situations. In inner cities? I'm sorry? Policies, are those policies that are raising rents on poor people and that are slowing anti-segregation anti initiatives, are they helping inner cities in the president's opinion? I would have to look at the specific policies you're referencing. I'd be happy to do, I'd be happy to do that after the briefing. Julie? Sarah, members of this administration are apparently talking about big cuts to the refugee resettlement program, which is currently capped at 45000 but I'm told it's under discussion for cuts as low as 25000 next year. Does the president feel that this country admits too many refugees? What does he think the proper level is, and what would the rationale be for scaling it back? 
not this is part of an ongoing like a, discussion and no policy decisions have been made uh, but we'll keep you posted as they are sir, Jeff the sir, are you program is too big I'm sorry does the president think there are too many refugees coming into this country uh, the president wants to make sure that whoever comes into the country we know who they are why they're coming uh, and that they pose no danger or threat to Americans that's the number one priority uh, we want to make sure that we have the processes in place and the ability to vet any individual that would come into this country if the Department of Homeland and security and other agencies that they would work in coordination with determine that they don't have the ability to vet uh, a certain number, then certainly the president would have concerns with that. Again, the number one priority is national security and making sure we have the ability to properly vet and process any individual that comes into this country. Sarah? Jeff? Sir, you said the uh, president wants this investigation to be completed, but he has not yet made the decision if he will sit down with Bob Mueller. Isn't he part of dragging this out a bit? And also, when he um, tells you something personally, do you take it as a directive or do you take it as his opinion? Uh, on the first part, I would refer you to the president's outside counsel and specific negotiations with the special counsel. And the second part, I'm sorry. You said that uh, his tweet this morning was his opinion. When he tells you something as a member of his staff, how do you know if it's a directive from the president or if it's simply his opinion? Uh, the president makes it pretty clear when I'm having those conversations with him. Is David, go ahead. It seemed pretty clear. His tweet this morning um, said that he wanted to, it was time for the investigation to be stopped. Does the president know that Jeff Sessions can't stop the investigation? Uh, and has he directed Rod Rosenstein to? The president's very well aware of how the process works. Once again, he's stating his opinion. David, go ahead. What does the president plan to do specifically about 3D plastic guns? And has he spoken to the the NRA about this issue. Uh, the Department of Justice made a deal without the president's approval on those regards. The president is glad this effort was delayed to give more time to review the issue. Uh, and this administration supports the decades-old legislation already on the books uh, that prohibits uh, the ownership of a holy plastic gun. Sarah, Steve. Sarah. The case of the pastor in Turkey, has the president raised this directly with President Erdogan? Uh, are you talking about the imprisonment of Pastor Brunson? Yes, they've discussed it on several occasions. And Sarah? Is, Sarah. There, I mean, is he upset about it? Or what? Uh, I think you can see in the actions that the president has made today that he's not happy uh, with Turkey's decision not to release Pastor Erdogan. Sarah, Blake? Sarah, 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 uh, possibly restructuring the way capital gains are taxed and on the possibility of a shutdown. Is the president talking about potentially endorsing a government shutdown before November's elections, after November's elections, or both? Uh, on the first part of your question, this is uh, something that has a lot of support from various people. No uh, administration policy has been determined, but the president's asked the Treasury Department to take a look into it. Uh, on the second part of your question in regards to the shutdown, the president isn't focused on the timing of before or after the election. He's focused on the results. He's been talking about this for a year and a half. Our immigration system system is completely broken, and he's begging and has been for Congress, particularly Democrats in Congress, to step up, do their jobs, stop kicking the ball down the field, and actually work with him to fix our system. Sarah, it's that Sarah, simple. Does the president, though, have, any, have, a, have a personal opinion as to whether or not the current system works or they should be changed? <laughs> Again, he's asked the Treasury Department to look into it. David? Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Um, two quickies about last night in Tampa. Does, first of all, does the president encourage the support of people who showed up last night in these QAnon and Blacks for Trump fringe groups? Um, and secondly, is the White House willing to say right now, in view of what happened with one of our TV colleagues last night, that it is wrong for his most vocal supporters to be menacing toward journalists doing their jobs in a situation like that or in any situation? Uh, on the first part, uh, the president condemns and denounces any group that would uh, incite violence against another individual um, and certainly doesn't support uh, groups that would promote that type of behavior. We've, we've been clear about that a number of times uh, since the beginning of the administration. On the second part of your question, um, the president, as I just said, does not support uh, violence against anyone and or anything. And we've been very clear um, every single time we've been asked about that. When it comes to the media, the president does think that the media holds a responsibility. Uh, we so fully support a free press, but there also comes a high level of responsibility with that. The media routinely reports on classified information and government secrets that put lives in danger and risk valuable national security tools. 
This has happened both in our administration and in past administrations. One of the worst cases was the reporting on the U.S. ability to listen to Osama bin Laden's satellite phone in the late 90s. Because of that reporting, he stopped using that phone and the country lost valuable intelligence. Unfortunately, it's now standard to abandon common sense ethical practices. This is a two-way street. We certainly support a free press. We certainly condemn violence against anybody, but we also ask that people act responsibly uh, and report um, accurately and fairly. Sir, sir, nobody was being Aisha. violent last night. They were trying to prevent a broadcaster from getting his broadcast out and yelling that his network sucks. Is that right or wrong? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. What was the first part of your question? I, I said no one was being violent last night in terms of, of hitting anybody, and no broadcaster was broadcasting state secrets. They were trying to do stand-ups at a public rally, and you had people trying to yell over them, preventing them from doing their jobs, and yelling that their network sucks on live TV. Look, Does the White House su support that or not? While we certainly support freedom of the press, we also support freedom of speech, uh, and we think that those things go hand in hand. Aisha. We talked a, a little bit about the tweets earlier, but he also, President Trump also tweeted about Paul Manafort and comparing his treatment to that of Al Capone, and he seemed to say that he would, he felt he was being treated unfairly. I guess, first of all, why does or does the president feel like Paul Manafort is being treated unfairly? And when he talked about this issue of solitary confinement and the fact that uh, Manafort hasn't been convicted yet, does the does this uh, administration have a larger concerns about solitary confinement being used? for people who haven't been convicted outside of Paul Manafort? I'm not aware of a specific policy uh, position that the administration holds on that front. Certainly the president's been clear. He thinks Paul Manafort's been treated unfairly. Sarah, Steve? Yeah. I'll take it. I have well, to run yet. Thank you. Uh, two questions, please. One India, one Pakistan. Uh, Chair, can you confirm if the president has accepted the invitation from Prime Minister Narendra Modi to be the special guest on the India Republic Day of India next year on January 26th. Uh, I know that the invitation has been extended, but I don't believe a final decision has been made. I do know that both uh, Secretary Mattis and Secretary Pompeo will be traveling to India, I believe it's next month, uh, and we'll begin uh, the dialogue and the process and potential discussion for a presidential visit later in the year. Sarah, Peter? Pakistan, is, Pakistan is concerned. There was a historic election, and uh, Mr. Khan, he ran on a corruption election in Pakistan. He had very little to say good things about India, U.S., and Israel, but still he's the Prime Minister of Pakistan today. How are you are going to uh, deal with him? Um, the United States... pakistan relation. Certainly, um, the United States and India have a uh, deep and abiding strategic partnership, and we're going to continue uh, to build on that partnership and advance cooperation, and I think you'll see that uh, at the meeting that will take place with Secretaries Pompeo and Mattis next month. Thank Peter? I'll make it quick. Does the President believe that Paul Manafort is innocent of the charges he faces? Uh, I don't believe that that's the President's role to play. He believes he's being treated unfairly. Beyond that, I can't say. Let me ask you that to follow up on the views that the President expressed on Twitter today saying that Attorney General Jeff Sessions should stop this rigged witch hunt right now. Has the president said that directly to Jeff Sessions at any point? I'm not aware, again, the president stating his opinion. We've got time Has for one said, last question. Has at any point to Rod Rosenstein? Not directly. that I'm aware of. So uh, just, last question, Mike. Just to follow on that, so the, president, it's the president's opinion that Sessions should end the Mueller probe, but it's also his opinion that the Mueller probe should play itself out. The president believes that uh, he's watched this process, frankly, play out. He'd like to see it come to a conclusion since it's been going on for the better part of a year and a half, uh, and they've found no collusion between the president, as he said many, many times before. Also, the president's got an event here starting in a couple minutes. Sure. It, the president, you've also said the president believes he can fire Mueller. So what, doesn't, it, doesn't it look weak on Twitter for him to say Sessions should end this probe when it's Rosenstein that can end the probe, and the president believes he can end the probe. It's not weak for the president of the United States to state his opinion. Thanks so much, guys.